last class uh, we were discussing about the bathymetry survey is published by naval hydrographic chart. So, in this slide I have uh, zoomed the breakwater turning circle and uh, entrance channel. So, here you are seeing a number the number is 12 suffix 2 this means 12.2 meters below the chart data. Chart datum is uh, generally the lowest water level. So, that we will not be the ship uh, in all tides when it is travelling we need the water depth at the low water that is what it is showing. This line what you are seeing is the 10 meter contour line generally this is uh, typically required for development of many ports what distance this 10 meter contour line is there this is given in a bold color. What you are seeing here is about 19.4 meters and this line what you are seeing is the 20 meter contour line. This is the breakwater which was built and here you are seeing 16, 16 4 things like that 11 means it is 11 meter exactly. Then there is a training circle which is to be dredged to 16.5 meter there is a over berth which is to be dredged to 16.5 this is the entrance channel this is partly in the protected zone and partly in the exposed zone where we need a higher water depth 17.5 meters. It is clear now what it gives this I have zoomed and I have given it to you. You can clearly see that they take this depth at random, but still it gives required information and this is available for the ship captain to come and when a ship is coming here normally the, uh, the captain of the ship he hands over the ship to the port conservator port conservator each port he knows the uh, requirement uh, to every port and he knows all the details what is required so the ship captain is flying from one place to another place one port to another port whereas the ship the port conservator of each port he takes over the ship once it enters and the tugboats also goes and connect to the ship and then they bring the ship through this entrance channel and when any training is required they turn through this. This is what uh, the movement of ships that will take care that will take place. So, any if you see any bathymetric chart you should be able to understand what it means. This shows uh, uh, topography as well as the topography is here. This is your bathymetry. As class, I was also discussing about uh, this uh, side scan survey. I will zoom this and. Uh, Here also you are seeing certain numbers this number is 9 this number is 10 and you are seeing some color also this color indicates 9 to 10 and this shows minimum sediment thickness that means what you are seeing below 9 and 10 meters is hard rock that is what it implies. So, somewhere here this will be see here we are seeing the numbers 3, 4, 5 and all that means uh, between this point and this point you have a sediment thickness of about 3 meters and uh, somewhere here you will see 0 and all if you see the black color black color is uh, 0 to 1 1 to 2 
what it means is uh, between 0 and 1 meter you have the hot state available, 1 and 2 hot state available, 2 and 3 hot state available. Is it clear to you what it means, isopatch means? What is the thickness of sediment that is available below the seabed and above the hot strata? That is what it shows. The information is uh, if you want to dredge, then you know what is the type of rock, when, when you will encounter the rock. Rock means the cost is very high. So, what is the depth of minimum sediments available? Another thing in contour is these contours will not uh, cut each other. I think you know this already. When you see any contour map, one contour will not crisscross with another contour. Same thing holds good for iso patch map also. The type of sediment, what is there, is 9 to 10 meter. Approximately, we can get by side scan sonar that you will see in the next slide. Side scan sonar is uh, generally used to see as you see here the side scan sonar this is your shoreline. The side scan sonar cannot work uh, very close to the shore up to 3, 4 meter water depth it cannot work. So, what you are seeing is the submerged outcrop rock what is there and it also indicates if there is any um, ship which has sunk any hard material all those things it gives. Science scan sonar what it uh, typically gives is the strata at the seabed and uh, it also will give what is the type of sediment that uh, whether it is sand or silt or clay. Then we will go to next slide here we will be discussing about different types of investigation that is required. One is called as meteorological information. What are the meteorological data? You have answered this question when I have asked. You told about wind, but other things that are required are cyclones. So, they have a record how many cyclones has crossed a particular site for a period of 20 years. 80 years, some locations 100 years. Normally, in the east coast during uh, northeast monsoon between October to December, at least 2 to 3 cyclones cross minimum. Then, rainfall what is the requirement for rainfall? Why do we need the rainfall? Why should we need the rainfall? Now, we will start from the beginning. Why do we need the wind? For a design purpose, why do we need the wind? Structural design? Of a building, you need require the lateral loads. Lateral force. So, when the wind is blowing, there will be some force. That force you have to calculate. That wind force is proportional to the square of the velocity. So, we need that. Cyclone, what do we need the cyclone? What is the difference between the wind and the cyclonic wind? Hmm? During cyclone also you have wind, normal case also you have wind. What is the difference? Another log of wind. Cyclonic wind means you will have a heavy wind, the wind velocity will be very high. Wind velocity can be as high as 200 kilometer per hour. What is the speed of the train? Maximum speed in India, India, how much, how much it will be? 120. Abroad? 
hmm? 300 I think they are going up to 500 now I think. What is the speed of a bus in India? Uh, normally maximum speed how much they will go? Forty and all no bus goes, even village nobody goes in 40 kilometer per hour. Normally in highway and all they go very high speed. Uh, see whenever you see the roads, roads are, our roads are designed for generally 80 to 90 kilometer per hour. But uh, most of our uh, buses they, when you see the national highway four lane road, they do not go less than 110, 120. So, I am telling all these speeds just to have some idea what is the speed of the wind. Normally, wind is about uh, Twenty to forty kilometer. What is the use of rainfall? Cyclone means whenever you have the cyclonic condition, we have to move the vessels out of the berth. In addition, when there is a crane, the crane we have to anchor it. We will not do the operation. Ship is not there, and uh, you have to position the crane properly. Otherwise, the crane will fall down. Crane is also a tall structure. So, it is also having a wind force. Normally, the crane is uh, on a wheels, it will be moving. So, during the cyclonic condition, you have to park the crane at a pre designated place. We will we'll go back to the side scan survey. So, the side scan survey instrument that is used this this uh, side scan sonar, which has a dual frequency model, the company which manufactures this, this is a photograph of the side scan survey. So, the side sky survey is typical to, to say bathymetry as well as the seismic uh, shallow seismic survey. It is done for a length of 2 kilometer and uh, along the coast and 3 kilometer into the sea. This side scan is done at a very 100 meter line spacing. The line spacing is uh, critical because if you go at a closer spacing, the time taken will be more and uh, the cost also will be higher. Now, all the transects are planned perpendicular to the coastline. Transects mean this 100 meter line be perpendicular to the coastline. One of the important requirement for the side scan survey is to show the presence of any sunken boats, anchors or any other obstructions on the sea floor within the surveyed region. So, near Sri Lanka there were some boats which have capsized and it has fallen down. Our Indian government is helping them find out where this wreckage is there. For that they use this survey, side scan survey. We should know exactly where the wreckage is. Then only we can have a firm to come and then they can remove the wreckage and then take it out. So, for that we need this. Main purpose is to indicate any significant variability in the pattern of surface sediment distribution. This is for uh, assisting the geotechnical investigation. Other one is whether there are any sunken boats and things like that. This figure shows what is the seabed, various uh, color code is also given here. So, basically we are uh, trying to find out this is uh, exposed uh, bedrock, this is bedrock and this is uh, sand, other one is silty clay. This color is silty clay, the green color is bedrock, this is exposed rock above the seabed and this color is sand. Now, you can see this is, this is sand, then they have a suspected rock 
and this is the exposed rock and this is silty clay. You understood the advantage, the earlier graph it has shown what is the thickness of this sediment between the rock and seabed and the side scan survey has shown what is the type of rock on the surface. But between the surface and the hard rock strata there can be some other sediments, some other type of sediments that can that has to be done by geotechnical investigation. See now we, you should understand what why we do this because it is covering a distance of 2 kilometer by 3 kilometer. The other investigation what we are going to do is after doing all these things I said we are shifting this outfall location to this same location we will have intake and outfall like this, outfall will continue here, intake well will be here, outfall uh, disposal system will be here. So, once you fix the alignment, you see the alignment, the alignment is fixed that it is not going through rock. Once you fix the alignment, all along this alignment we will do the geotechnical investigation. What is the spacing of geotechnical investigation? Suppose this length is about a kilometer. What they do is they do at every 100 meters or 50 meters one borehole. That means at every 50 meter, if you are doing for a distance of 1000 meters, we will have 20 boreholes. Borehole means from the seabed they will go maybe 20 to 30 meters. The type of structure what we build is a pile supported structure for that we need the seabed investigation typically for a depth of 20 to 30 meters below the seabed. So, we need two types of survey one is uh, the survey which is to be carried out on a large scale for which we use this shallow seismic side screen survey fix the alignment then go for a detailed investigation along the alignment. The cost of doing the geotechnical investigation 20 boreholes will be about uh, 1 crore 100 lakhs, it is not uh, a small amount. So, if you do the geotechnical investigation here, then you found the rock here, then if you shift it here, this 1 crore will become waste. The side scan, bathymetry, uh, shallow seismic survey and all will cost maybe 40 to 50 lakhs. So, you get the whole uh, area what is the type of sediment this will be used not only for uh, typical study only will be carried out for a port development also for a distance of about 2 kilometers and for a length into the sea for a distance of about 3 kilometers or maybe about 20 to 30 meter contour. So, this is to find out what is the dredging requirement. The whole the three kilometer what is being done. So this is the same. Uh, this is called as a mosaic map, which gives uh, the transects and if there is any uh, sunken boats and all. This shows the exposed rock. What is shown here. Now we are discussing about this uh, meteorological data, wind. This shows what is the operating wind and maximum design wind. Cyclone also we have to do to find out when it is occurring, what will be the wind speed during cyclone. I was asking about rainfall, what is the use of rainfall? No idea. Rainfall is mainly for storm water drainage. So, whenever we design a port, we stack lot of cargo during peak rain the water level should not rise and it should also get drained easily. For storm water drainage you need the rainfall. Relative humidity, temperature and barometric pressure these are all uh, not uh, directly required for port development, but anyhow these are given. If you are using some equipments whether the equipments are to be specified for this relative humidity for that purpose we give this. So, I have shown the meteorological data, the other one is the oceanographic data. This data is to be collected 
and uh, the following data is to be done you have given most of the thing tides waves tide is the level of uh, water level variation it is the attraction between sun moon and earth we typically have two high tides and two low tides in a day we should know the tidal range in chennai it may be around 0 0.6 0 0.8 meters in kandla it will be about 4 to 5 meters so for that reason we should find out the tidal range waves we need three parameters to be measured one is the direction of the wave height of the wave and period of the wave this also typically should cover for a period of one year but we have to extrapolate to get the maximum wave heights that is for 100 years one in 100 year is called that is return period it holds good for uh, many parameters over a period of 100 year what will be the maximum wave height that is to be determined because for that only you have to design the structures storm surges whenever a cyclone crosses a particular site landfall point there is a sheet of water which goes along with the cyclone when it is crossing that raises the water level once the cyclone goes to the land the water level recedes the period of the tide is 12 hours that is from the crest to trough the period of the wave is 5 seconds to 20 seconds cyclonic time maximum wave height should be 20 seconds there is no period for storm surge storm surge means when the cyclone crosses the water level rises then when the cyclone has crossed its water level goes down there is no period for the storm surge tsunami is also like a long period wave but it has a period maybe 10 minutes or 6 minutes it is in minutes not in seconds this is in hour tide waves are in seconds tsunami is in terms of minutes then you have to measure the currents current speed and direction two parameters salinity you have to measure because uh, the draft of the vessel depends on the salinity and we need the sea water temperature also then suspended load and sea bed suspended load means what is the amount of uh, silt or sand which is in a suspended uh, condition in the water this is to find out what will be the siltation that will take place then also we should know what is the sea bed condition so these are the various oceanographic data that is to be collected now we will see the geotechnical investigation this uh, describes the subsoil investigation in the backup area of the port on land that is called as a land bore hole and in the harbor basin of the port in the sea area that is given by the marine bore holes so we have two sets of bore holes one is on the land that is called as a land bore hole one is on the sea that is called as a marine bore hole is it clear land bore hole is cheaper each bore hole will be only about 20 25000 rupees for a depth of about 20 meters whereas marine bore holes will be about 2 to 3 lakhs sometimes it may be higher also we have to mobilize special equipments for marine hole bore holes that is called as a jack up rig so the mobilization cost itself will be about 20 to 30 lakhs then what the geotechnical report should cover so they should collect the soil samples at regular interval of depth i said about 20 to 30 meter we need that means every meter they have to collect the sample and carry out the test one of the test is to find out the particle size what is the size of the particle then we do what is known as a standard penetration test spt test i will tell what is the importance of the spt test once you have the spt value from which you can get the properties of the soil then we collect lab test i will not go in detail about the lab test 
you refer some of the civil engineering textbooks, geotechnical, liquid limit, plastic limit, shear and so many things and we have to submit the report with all the lab test results. So, what is this SPTN value? The SPTN value is number of blows for 300 mm penetration. They have a SPT spoon and there is a hammer and there is a drop weight. They will count the number of blows, number of drops. They will count the number. There will be penetration in the soil. First 150 millimeter they will neglect. Then they will do next 150 millimeter. Then the third 150 millimeter. The second and third 150 millimeters, they will sum up. They will count what is the number of blows. Is it clear? The first 150 they remove because when they do the boring, what they do is they go to the site. They try to remove the soil by boring. Suppose they removed for one meter, then they will use the sp to spoon to drop. First 150 millimeter how many drops are there they will count let us say about 30 blows are required. They will not use the data then they will continue for next 150 millimeter count the number of blows let us say it is about 40. Then another 150 millimeter they will count the number of blows 30 let us say. So, 40 plus 30 is 70 they will say 70 is the SPT n value. Then they will drill through that and go to next 1 meter. When you are drilling and removing the soil, the soil will be disturbed. They first do for 150 millimeter which is on a disturbed soil and the, that they will neglect. Then they will do the next 150 and next 150. Suppose the soil is very hard and if you ask a fellow to go on do the number of blows, there may not be any penetration. You cannot ask the fellow to sit and count the number of blows. There should be some point where they have to stop. That is when the number of blows are greater than 100, they typically stop. When n is greater than 100, the soil is assumed to be very good. So, we have basically two types of soil, one is called as sand and clay and we also have something in between that is silt. The particle size of clay is small, particle size of sand is more that is size of the particle in microscope. Another thing is the clay particle will be cohesive, sand particle will be cohesionless. What it means is if you take the clay particle, it will stick into your hand, you have to necessarily wash your hand, but if you take a sand, it will not stick into your hand. Point is clear no? Silt is in between. So, for a clay, if the n value is between 2 to 4, it is called as star soft, 8 to 6, it is stiff, and greater than 32, it is very hard. For a cohesionless soil like sand, we need what is known as angle of internal friction that is given in degrees between 27 to 40 degrees. The 27 means it is a loose sand and 40 means it is dense sand. Which sand is better for foundation, loose or dense? Dense sand is better. Then if it is a clay soil, we have what is known as cohesion that value is between 12 to 200 kilo Newton per square meter. It can be more than 200 also for very stiff clays. Then we have rock, we can have weak rock, weathered rock, hard rock. Rock can also be classified based on the formations, it can be called as basalt, can be called as granite and we discuss about core recovery and uh, rock quality designation. Core recovery means when you are drilling through the rock, they take typically about 1 meter. What is the type of 
what is the size of the rock pieces. So, if you core through the rock, we will use board. Suppose you take a rock, you core through the rock and this is for a length of 1000 millimeters. So, you get one rock piece here, get another rock piece here, get another rock piece here. This may be about uh, 50 millimeters, this may be about 200 millimeters, this may be about 70 millimeters. So, core recovery equal to 70 plus 200 plus 50 divided by 1000. So, if you want to express as a percentage multiply by 100 that is 32 percent. So, what we do is we have the water level here we have the seabed here. So, we have a floating barge or a jack up rig, we take a core through this. So, every 1 meter you take one sample, suppose there is a rock available here, you take for about 1 meter, you drill through this and take the pieces and you assemble the piece like this. So, you have here the rock has become powdered when you are drilling through that the rock has become as a powder, the rock piece is not available. So, when you assemble it in 1000 millimeters, we have one rock piece available here 70 millimeter in size, another rock piece 200 millimeters, another rock piece 50 millimeters. So, you count 70, 200, 50 that is about 320 that is equal to 32 percent. So, can anyone tell what is the RQD for this civil engineering students? You do not know. RQD is nothing but what is the huh? above 100 and above 100 I think. Huh? That it is 150. Maybe I will check. 100 mm. So here the RQD will be 20 percent. You have to take only this. You have to neglect these two. So if the RQD and the RQD is also same as core recovery, then the quality of rock is very good. Core recovery can be 100 percent. RQD also can be 100 percent. If you have basalt or granite, then we will have the RQD and core recovery same and equal to 100 percent. If you have weathered rock, then you will be having very less value. So, normally uh, this is your water and uh, suppose there are certain locations where we have rock available, rock uh, can be like this. So, we have uh, when you have the rock, we have we are starting with highly weathered rock, weathered rock, hard rock. So, very close to the seabed, we will be having weathering taking place. The parent rock, which is a hard rock, loses its property then we have highly weathered rock. Highly weathered rock means it is not having high strength, it is having very low strength because the weathering action is high. Then we have the weathered rock, then we have the hard rock. So, we have the information based on the core recovery and RQD what will be the type of rock. So, this is what we get when you do this uh, soil investigation. This SPTN value is very important. From there only we get a lot of information about the type of soil and 
when you go in for uh, calculation of air pressure, I will let you know how this uh, soil investigation results will be useful. I think I will stop with this. If you have any questions, you can ask. The other lecture is on breakwater. Any doubt so far? No doubt. Hmm? What is the doubt? That numbers are there, no eleven suffix to n value. No sir, on the picture, on the map, eleven suffix to depth is there. Yeah, yeah. Or on the explain that again. No, eleven. Four, it is written. It is 11.4 meters. Depth at, depth at that point. See, they don't want to write uh, 11.4. They don't want to put 11.4. Sometimes the dot will be missing. If the dot is missing. It will give 114 meters. Because the bathymetry chart is given for the whole region. We have 114 meter also is there. Water depth. Water depth can go up to 3,000 meter also. So to Make it uh, clear. They make eleven suffix four. We should not make a mistake by not showing the point. That is the reason. Understood the reason? No. You put eleven point four. Point is not visible. The captain will think it is one one four meter. Because in the mid sea also there can be a exposed rock. That place you can have a suddenly it will reduce from hundred meters to. Eleven meters. That's why they say eleven eleven four meters. Eleven slash four. Some places you can see minus two three. It means what is the depth above the chart date in a tidal region? No, your high tide will be five meters, low tide will be zero meter. If you are doing the studies, let us say in five meters. You find out the depth, make the tidal correction. Whichever is above zero, you write it as minus. This point is clear, no? When you do a survey, you cannot expect that you will do the survey only in the low tide. You will do it in the low tide as well as in the high tide. Preferable to do it in the high tide. More the depth you measure, accuracy will be better. And you can also measure up to high tide what will be the portion that you will get submerged. So there they will put a minus sign. Minus sign means it is above the chart datum. Plus means below the chart datum. They are using minus above the chart datum mainly because it's only at some places you will have minus. Whereas most of the places you will have plus only. You can give below chart datum minus and above chart datum plus. That means everywhere you have to put minus below chart datum. That's why they. Any other doubt? 